Greetings gamers and welcome back to Perfect Date, the dating sim where you eventually turn into a cat if you do it wrong somehow. My name is Esper Lydia of Magic Missile Games, Perfect Date was developed by the Bay Team, produced by Boss Studios, and I am here to read it to you and make interesting judgments. So without further ado, let's get back into it. When last we stopped, we had literally just gotten to the main portion of the actual game. So, we are going to continue chapter one. So we have three options. We can romance a cat, we can research, and recon. What I'm told is if we finish up these, then, uh, then the chapter ends. So we want to make sure that we do as much as we can in the romance section first. But we also want to get our work done. So. Romance. We only have two choices to start, I assume. Oh, there's a secret mystery kitty. How awesome is that? Uh, so we have two choices. We have Mick Murphy and we have Snooty Booty to start out. I need some practice with my Irish accent, so I'm going to choose Mick Murphy for now. We'll see what happens. Meow. Kata, wake up. Hmm, what? Mom, is that you? Shh, quiet, Kata. Come with me. I have something to show you, but you have to be quiet. McMurphy? Yes, it's me. But it's the middle of the night. Ah, Kata, you're not scared, are you? Why would I be scared? Creeping around in a forest in the middle of the night. Don't worry, Kata. I'll be there to protect you. McMurphy, you know very well there's a force field around this island stopping anything from the outside getting in. It makes this a pretty safe place. Indeed, so the only things you have to worry about are the things that are already there. Little devious face there. He leers at me with a mock snarl. Rawr. Seriously, Murph, if you're the worst threat here, then this is the safest place on Earth. So come on, Kata, what are you waiting for? I follow the scraggy cat into the forest. The ground is wet and muddy, and I lose my footing a couple times, but McMurphy is too determined to notice. Suddenly he stops dead in his tracks. Here we are! Uh, where is here, McMurphy? Well, clearly the middle of the forest, Lydia. Seriously. He ignores my question and starts digging into some mud and leaves on the ground. Almost got it. Could use a hand cutter if you don't mind. Get these leaves out of the way, that's it. Here we are. Okay. We keep digging until there's a fairly deep hole in the ground. Marams and nightclothes are covered in mud and leaves, and McMurphy looks like a bog monster in the darkness. Ta-da! Ta-da! Can't you see it, Kata? Um, I'm not sure what I'm looking at. I always forget how useless human eyes are in the dark. Just reach into the hole and take out whatever you find. I reluctantly reach into the burrow and feel something hard and cold against my hand. I wrap my fingers around it and pull it out. I know the shape, but my eyes can hardly process it. it it's a bottle? Oh, I was hoping for a gun. Why would I be hoping for a gun? Because this game is already mysterious. That's right, Kata! This is my secret stash. No one knows about it, not a soul, but I thought I'd share it with you. Thought we could have kind of a welcome to the island party for tea. Oh, it's his alcohol, isn't it? Secret stash? Is this... Booze? Gasp! McMurphy lets out a wild laugh. That it is, Kata! You drink alcohol, but you're a cat. That can't be good for your body. Well, it's not good for anybody's, but it does wonders for the soul, to be sure. Well, I suppose you're right there, McMurphy. Oh, I guess one little nip couldn't hurt. That's the spirit! 
I try in vain to get some of the mud off of me before giving up and sitting down against a tree. A sodden McMurphy curls up in my lap. It takes a while to uncork the bottle. McMurphy keeps telling me to smash it open and that the shards of glass will only add to the flavor, but eventually I succeed my way. I pour a little out from McMurphy into a leaf, and I self-consciously swig from the bottle, feeling a touch uncivilized. Let's see, covered in mud, middle of the woods, drinking from a bottle? Nah, I'm the epitome of class here. McMurphy, what in heaven's name is this? Oh, don't worry about that, Kata. It's not about the taste, it's about the company. I hardly think I'm the type of person you'd usually hang around with. Well, I usually hang around with cats, and they're not exactly what you'd call my type. Oh, getting it started early, eh, Murph? I respond by widening my eyes as I take another swig from the bottle. Somehow, it tastes less terrible the second time around. For me, alcohol usually tastes worse. But I'm weird. I find humans much more interesting. They usually have a lot to say present company accepted. McMurphy winks at me with his huge green eyes, and I blush, trying desperately not to show how boring I feel compared to him. Yeah, I'm definitely boring compared to your average house cat. Oh, don't take it harsh. I'm only joking, Kata. McMurphy, I've been meaning to ask you something for a while now. You know, the whole day that I've owned you. I've uh, known you. I don't own you. You don't own cats. Cats Cats have staff. Anything kind of ask away, I'd love for us to get to know each other better. This car thing, you know my name is... The rest of my sentence is drowned out by McMurphy's howls of laughter. Oh, you make me laugh, Kata. You really do. I know exactly what your name is, Lydia. Kata is just a... It's like a pet name, you know. Kata means friend, buddy, amigo. That's what my mom used to call me, and I guess it just stuck. Called people, and I guess it just stuck. It's one of the few things I remember about her, actually. That and her beautiful smile. Hey, flash me your pearly whites. Okay, theory number one, these all used to be humans. But they're okay with being cats, which, you know, I would be okay with, too. I smile at Murphy awkwardly, because... Yeah. He bursts into fits of laughter again. Ha <laughs> ha! That's a lovely smile to be sure, but you need to grow into it yet. Could I have a top up over here? Oh, Trump being hit on by a drunk cat. That's amazing. I don't know if I feel comfortable giving you more alcohol, McMurphy. I think you've had more than enough. In fact, I didn't even want to give you any in the first place. But did you not know that cats have nine lives? And you want to waste them all on booze? And why not? Besides, the night is still young, and we've only just begun our conversation. Come on, Kata, we've got a lot of chin wagon to do yet. Are you gonna pour or not? So we have a choice. I'm pretty sure this will get me points with them, and this will... I don't know, actually. But, you know, we came this far. Let's try to win his trust by drinking with him. Part of me thinks I ought to be a responsible human here and cut off your alcohol supply, but... But... I believe in a true democracy. Would you care to expand on that and perhaps pour the drink as you do? The true democratic principle that none shall have power over the people. Cats. Whatever. How inspirational. I'll toast to that. All right, McMurphy, but on your head be it, for with the rejection of authority comes the responsibility for bearing the consequences of your actions. I pour some more of the suspect liquor into McMurphy's soggy leaf. Slen slente. Toast. Probably in Gaelic, I can't say. I don't know how things work in cat protocol, but in her human terms, you are... A very mature, no, wait, very grown up, no, adult, ah, oh, fiddlesticks. You're over a certain age, and as such can take responsibility for your own choices. I like it, spoken like a true libertine. 
Well, I wouldn't go that far, but I could shake my tail and I feel the vibe. I can't believe I just said that. This stuff is stronger than it looks. Well, considering I can't really see it, it's the middle of night, I'm drinking out of a bottle that's covered in mud. That's not saying much. My proverbial hat is off to you. I feel disproportionately pleased that Murph has paid me a compliment. Say, Kata, you ever been in love? McMurphy, that second leaf has gone straight to your head. The cat smiles slightly. Well, I'm gonna take that as a yes. Are you still with him? Well, I was never technically with them to begin with. Ouch. But it's definitely their loss. Oh, I don't think so, McMurphy. We never actually met. Oh, you're not saying you're one of those, uh, internet stalker types, are you? <laughs> them catfish that kibbles tells tales of. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. What? Um, no. No, McMurphy, gosh. It was Bowie, okay? I was in love with David Bowie. Seems legit everyone was in love with David Bowie. McMurphy frowns and shakes his furry head. See these eyes so green I could stare for a thousand years? You know. Oh, I'm drunk now. Oh, it's a charming song, but I'm afraid I have no idea what's going on anymore. Oh, come on, McMurphy. Everyone knows who David Bowie is. Red hair, lots of makeup, one blue eye, one brown eye. I cannot handle my alcohol. Well, I did know one sweet soul with a blue eye and a brown eye, but I can assure you they wouldn't be caught dead in makeup. McMurphy snorts. What about you, McMurphy? Who's the love of your life? <laughs> you don't have one, Gata. Never have, never will. I'm a lone wolf. A free agent. I'm... I'm... Big ol' yeti. Out in the mountains, all hairy and smelly and alone. For some reason, I find that very hard to believe, Mr. <laughs> McMurphy. Oh. Fine. You're right. I'm a fool. A lovesick fool. I've had my heart broken more than once, Kata. And each time hurt more than the last, I tell you. The thing is, though, Kata, I can't remember a thing about any of them. Any of what? Oh, no! <laughs> Who are we talking about? David Bowie? Ah, oh, that's right. So tell me how the two of you met. McMurphy, I think I'm drunk. What the hell have we been drinking? Oh, leave me alone. I haven't touched a drop. I think I'm gonna vow. I wake up the forest with a hemp-empty bottle in my hand, and McMurphy is nowhere to be seen. How the hell did I get here? I can't remember a thing. I look at my catalog. Oh, is that really the time? Crikey! I need to get to work! My first day, or second day, or whatever this is, is going fabulously, everyone. Just wonderful. Do we want to try one of the others? Yeah, I think as long as we don't complete them, it'll be okay. So, oh, what can we do in romance now? I just want to see something. I hope it gives me a back button. It does. Oh, Snooty Booty has a broken heart. Maybe I should have picked her. I don't know what that means, but that looks sad. I'm sad now. Research. Let's try research. See what happens there. Okay, I've got three options, because the others I have to unlock by doing other stuff. Interesting. 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 Unlocks after complete completing chapter five. So I can do a field trip of sorts with the professor. A slow day today. I've only got to organize a few samples from previous field trips. Or time to round up some rowdy kitties. Let's go on a field trip with the professor. He's an intriguing character to me. 
Professor Popper told me to be ready early and dressed for hiking. Oh, that's not going to be good after my ha hangover. As we're doing field work this morning, I'm not sure that I have anything that would pass for hiking gear, to be honest. Some sturdy shoes would be very good. Oh well, lab coat and trainers it is then, as usual. A message from the professor lights up my catalog. Set to go. I'm waiting outside my tent. Ah, oh, Lydia, are you ready for our field work today? Yes, of course, Professor. May I ask where we're going? Somewhere I think you'll find very interesting. Professor hands me a backpack. Here, take this bag. It's very full, but surprisingly light. Popper is set off at a brisk pace, calling back to me over his shoulder. This way! I run to catch him up. After some serious walking, with me struggling to keep up, the professor stops abruptly and listens. Do you hear that? There is a distant sound of bubbling water. That does not sound distant, game. We're almost there! Secretly, I'm relieved, as I don't think I could go much further, having done no training for living in an island territory, even though I've been no- Sorry, I'm just a little climbing. Climbing? I hide my dismay. Where does he get his energy from? It's because he's actually... No, he can't be Kibbles. We've seen both of them in the same place. It's just at the top there. It's not as difficult of a climb as it looks. He still does have an adorable face, though. We are in front of an almost vertical rock face. Just copy me! Clambers up expertly. I manage to find a spot that will support my foot and start the climb. I make little progress before slipping and falling flat on my bum. I try again. This time I take it slow. Again I fall. What happened to the benefits of catification? The others keep going on about. Professor notices I'm having trouble and holds a hand out for me. I manage to climb up just enough to take hold of him, and he lifts me up the rest of the way. His strength is impressive. Curious, even. Curiouser and curiouser. I don't get you, Professor. Not a fan of climbing, eh? Can't say I've done much of it, Professor. Come along, then. I can get you there. He pretty much pulls me all the way to the top, and then leads me to the entrance of a small cave. The sound of running water is very loud now. I instantly see why. A natural spring has cut its way through the rock and created a beautiful cascade of sparkling, clear water. It looks delicious! I kneel down without thinking and begin to drink. It tastes amazing. Wow, me, what happened to the testing things to make sure they're not full of cat urine? Eh, whatever. As I come up for breath, I see the professor looking at me with suspicion. You should know better. It is never wise, under any circumstances, to ingest something that is unproven. But here, on this island, it would be prudent to exercise more caution than usual. I feel embarrassed at my lack of consideration. Yes, of course, sir, I wasn't thinking. I felt so thirsty, and it looks so good! I do understand. Many have made that same error. Fortunately for you, this is tried and tested for safe consumption. It's good, don't you think? My body feels suddenly re-energized. I feel like I could climb any wall. It's incredible! I feel fantastic! What's in it? Cocaine! We don't know. That's why we're here. We need more samples. We've been studying this water for months now, and we still know very little about it. Check your bag. We just know it's safe to drink, but not what's in it at all. I open my bag. It's full to the brim with empty plastic bottles. We'll need to fill all of these with water. We're going to need as much as we can carry. I do as he says. By the time all the bottles are full and back in my bag, it weighs a ton. But I feel like I can lift anything. The effect of the water is powerful. The professor has also packed his own rucksack with bottles. That should do us for now. Let's get these back. As we make our way down the rock face and back to camp, I have no problem keeping up with the professor. I feel I could run all the way. However, as we get closer to home, I start to feel the effect wear off. 
My bag becomes unbearably heavy. The final limp in the cap is torture. I need to rest. Fascinating. Oh, I'm- hey look, I'm 2.8% done with the antidote! Okay. Recon! Wait, let's see if- Oh, she's still brokenhearted. Can I only choose her the one time? Sad face. Well, let's try research then. No, recon. And uh, see what happens there. And then we'll probably need to rest anyway. So we have two options for recon. The security guard I met when I arrived might be a good lead. Time for a bit of interrogation work. And a strange message in the middle of the night. Doesn't anyone on this island sleep? Alright, I'm curious about the secret source. I hear my catalog beeping. I presume it's the professor. I tumble out of bed, half asleep, and fumble around looking for the device. I look at the screen, my eyes struggling to focus. Really should have put on my glasses first. The message isn't from the professor at all. There's no contact information. Come outside. Who is this? Come outside. They obviously aren't going to respond to my question. Should I do as the message tells me? Yes or no? Eh. My curiosity is roused. I have a feeling there's something important to learn from the stranger, so I throw on my clothes and crawl out of my tent. I don't see anything out of the ordinary. Anyone out here? Hello? Catalog beeps again. Walk to the edge of the forest. I'm not going any further until you tell me who you are. Walk to the edge of the forest. No. Walk to the edge of the forest. Walk to the edge of the forest. Walk to the edge of the forest. Stop it! Walk to the edge of the forest. By now I realize I have walked to the edge of the forest. The edge of the forest, I see something on the ground. As I get closer, it becomes clear that it's a small posy of flowers. I gingerly pick them up and notice that several of the flower heads are missing. My catalog beeps again. Follow the petals. And that's when I see the trail of little orange petals, the same color as the bouquet I'm holding. Well, I've come this far, no turning back now. I begin to walk. I'm nervous, so I call out. Hello? No answer. Louder this time. Hello? 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 Who is that? Who goes there? Major, is that you, Fluffy Butt? I really wish you wouldn't call me that human. What on earth do you think you're playing at? Cavorting around the forest in the dead of night, causing a ruckus. This picture is so cute, guys. He's like, mm. Oh, Major, you don't know how pleased I am to see you. I need your help. And this can't wait until a civilized hour? So cute, guys. I'm afraid it can't. I'm not the one instigating this. I've been getting messages from an anonymous source asking me to follow them into the forest. Look, they've left this trail. Ha! Ah, Calendula Maritima. Marigolds! Herb of the sun. They're said to represent creativity, though some believe them to be symbols of cruelty and grief. Major knows a lot about flowers. Interesting. Your knowledge- sorry, wrong voice. Your knowledge is always so impressive, but I have to say on this occasion it's not very comforting. Fluffy Butt goes striding off with purpose. Come along then, Lydia. Are we going to follow this trail or not? I shuffle awkwardly behind him. Before the sun comes up, eh? We continue on for a short while. Notice that the petals are getting more sparse. It's becoming more difficult to see them until eventually they seem to run out and we find ourselves in a small clearing. Well, it appears somebody has been playing a joke on you, Lydia. I sadly agree. This has been nothing but a wild goose chase. Seems so, Major. Aw, look at how sad I am. I'm sorry for dragging you into this. Let's get back to our beds before we waste any more precious snooze time on this fool. I turn to Floofy Butt, 
and notices that his back is arched and his fur is puffed up, making him look even more floofy than usual. Something wrong, Major? You tell me, human. Does that pile of rocks look suspicious to you? Amongst myriad rock piles, I notice a small, contrived-looking cairn. Floofy butt's right. It looks far from natural. That looks to me like it's asking to be inspected, Major. Well, get to it, Lydia. You're the one with the thumbs. I begin to dismantle the small mound rock by rock. It's not until the foundation stone is removed that we find a manila envelope. Major, look! It's a letter! Looks rather large for a letter, my dear. I think you ought to open it. Here or back at base? Having got you this far, I think it's only fair that I have equal share of the spoils. Spoils? Yes, perhaps we should look right now, Major. As I'm speaking, I've torn into the envelope. Well, out with it! Um, looks like drawings? What sort of drawings? I'm not sure, but they look quite old. Antique, even. But do they have value, human? Probably to someone. They appear to be sketches of people here on the island, but I don't recognize anyone. Why would someone lead me to these? How do you know you were meant to find them? Because we followed a trail and it led us here? Actually, the trail ended a while back. This could be a mere coincidence. I hardly see the intrigue in a few old scribbles. They show no artistic flair at all. Even so, I'm going to hang on to these to see if they prove relevant to whatever mystery is unfolding here on this island. Floofy rolls his eyes. You really ought to focus more on the clues that matter instead of running around in the middle of the night on a wild goose chases. Let's head back before anybody discovers you're missing. I roll the drawings up and tuck them into my waistband. I will study them when I have more time. I think Floofy Butt is probably right, but I don't want to miss a trick. Get some rest now, Lydia. Finally, a sensible suggestion. I head after Floofy Butt struggling to keep up. I really need some sleep. And on that note, I will in fact be calling it an episode. I do hope you enjoyed it and will be joining me for the next, where we will probably start by resting and then seeing if we can bug any of the other cats. Oh, dang it. <laughs> Won't let me do it to see if I can bug the cats, but uh, thank you all again for watching. Uh, let me know if you have any comments, questions, concerns, other games, anything like that. And as always, keep on gaming. <laughs>